Now, talking about, uh, and these are my disclosures, um, why should we at all address uh, the uh, these patients? Uh, because it's painful for these patients, and often their pain is uh, easy to treat, and also they have a destructive disease where the, the joints are deteriorating. So it's quite uh, important that we look at these patients and also we can give them a lot of information that is related to the arthritic condition uh, especially that uh, for example weight loss is very beneficial for weight bearing joints uh, so there are many reasons why we should see these patients it's a disease that often peaks about uh, 50 years and that is actually what makes the huge problem for us as a rheumatologist uh, because a lot of other diseases are uh, related to this uh, age group. And that's why I've divided a bit into different ages. Uh, uh, so you have a practical uh, assessment of these patients when you see them, uh, if you are, for example, a dermatologist. Uh, it's something that is can be located to every joint, but it is mostly located in joints beneath uh, the waist and down. It, mo most often it's in this area, but it can also be in the fingers, especially the dip joints, uh, because the nail ligaments uh, can serve as a sort of inflammatory uh, activity for the joint. And this creates the problem because another disease looks like it quite a lot, and that is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis has uh, also very keen to sit on the lower joints and also the uh, dip joints of the fingers. So sometimes it can be really, really difficult to uh, distinguish between these two diseases. Often we divide them into sort of three uh, groups in our uh, way to uh, dis discriminate between what is most likely. Now, if it's children, it's usually not that difficult to spot if it's a psoriatic disease. But if we go up to adolescence, they, are usually also quite easy to see. Uh, it can be reactive arthritis, so we have to look for, for example, venereal diseases or gastrointestinal diseases. The huge problem is arising when they pass, for example, 40 years, because then OA starts to be a problem. And OA, again, as I said before, is a huge problem. And these patients also have a lot of other problems. They start to show uh, signs of their metabolic diseases and have uh, other diseases that can uh, mimic psoriatic arthritis. Uh, so these are creating a huge problem for us uh, in everyday evaluation. This is just a picture. Here you can see a patient with a psoriatic arthritis in the, in the third finger, but this OA woman could easily be mistaken for an uh, psoriatic uh, if you're not uh, used to seeing these ends. Um, even though she has a huge family disposition for psoriatic. Uh, so uh, you have to be used to seeing these uh, patients if you want to discriminate between the different conditions. Uh, psoriatic arthritis is something that is uh, increasing in risk depending on who you are and what your psoriatic condition is. Uh, I've written up some uh, uh, risk ratios uh, or hazard ratios for developing uh, this disease. But if you boil it down to sort of a single sentence, it is quite easy. Severe psoriasis increases the risk of developing uh, psoriatic arthritis. So the more severe your psoriasis is, the, the easier you get an arthritic condition. It's usually not strictly symmetrically, right? and they need all, not always, but around up to 50% have suffers from an enteritis or tendinitis, especially in the feet. And they often have sausages or dactylitis, and they can have all kinds of other involvements of their uh, joints, uh, especially uh, the back pain and SI joint, but also uveitis. And here's a classic example of psoriatic patients where you have uh, not completely symmetric uh, arthritis in the fingers. The enteritis can be severe. Here's a patient with a severe enteritis in the Achilles tendon. And this is often the most common place for they have their enteritic uh, condition. They can be in the feet, uh, especially, but sometimes also in the elbows. I, I must admit, 
uh, elbow pain is very common, especially if you use your hands a lot. So it, it's not always necessarily uh, uh, due to psoriatic uh, uh, intensitis, but especially the feet, uh, the Achilles tendon and the plantar fascia. So if they complain of pain in this area, it's likely that they could be related to psoriasis. If they have a high CRP, it's always a red flag. They have actually a poor prognosis and it should be seen as a, a red flag where we should see them for a, a, an arthritic condition if it's combined with joint or ligament pain. The problem is that CRP can also increase due to obesity and, and many other conditions. Uh, so um, often blood samples are not that clinically relevant for us to evaluate if they have a psoriatic arthritis or a psoriatic enthesitis. Uh, imaging is probably better, uh, but uh, x-rays are very good. They measure bone uh, and not cartilage. And in the beginning of the disease, it's actually mostly the cartilage and the, uh, uh, the uh, enthesitis that it creates the problem. So in the early phases of the uh, disease, it's often negative. Ultrasound is excellent. It's, uh, it covers a lot of the uh, soft tissue, for example, uh, tendinitis and enthesitis. Uh, it's good for judging inflammation, but it can be difficult to uh, evaluate it comparing to other arthritic conditions. And then there's MRI. The problem here is again that we have no clear evaluation between uh, psoriatic arthritis and osteoarthritis, but it is very good at uh, judging for, uh, for example, uh, uh, joints and cartilage and also the sort of deeper layers. And then there are some of the new imaging uh, modalities, PET, which sounds, which is really, really promising, but it's still on a research level. Uh, I've taken the liberty just to include two, although it's not something we use commonly. Uh, this is just a picture of ultrasound that I got from the Natasha, where you can see here, this is a finger joint with the fusion. And here's a finger joint with a synovial thickening. And there's a lot of a flow doppler where you can evaluate how much uh, inflammation there is in different joints. So ultrasound is sort of hand-on and very easy to use and we use it a lot. Uh, so for psoriatic arthritis, it's quite nice to uh, use it. This is a PET uh, and this is an FG PET uh, where you can see intercitis here in the uh, elbow and you can see inflammation in the shoulders. Um, and you can also see that some of the uh, ligaments in the spine are hit by inflammation. So in this setup, it creates a huge benefit for this patient. The problem is that you have a lot of other things in this patient. You have a lot of lymph nodes that turn out positive. So often you can get a bit confused about the pictures that you get back from the, from the uh, image unit. Depending on the tracer, you can get a completely different picture if you use uh, a different tracer. And here you show something about osteitis. So how much uh, inflammation in the bone is present. So a lot of these new um, tracers gives us a completely new opportunity to evaluate uh, the early signs of psoriatic arthritis. And my guess is that in a couple of years, uh, this is uh, something that we can get really, really huge benefit from. So who should you send to a rheumatologist? Well, uh, if you have a psoriatic patient with moderate to severe pain uh, or spinal pain, uh, they, they should be referred to a rheumatologist for an evaluation. Um, if it's OA, no harm done, they still need the information about what can be done for their OA. If they have severe uh, Psoriasis, psoriasis or inverse psoriasis, scalp psoriasis, nail psoriasis, the, they have an increased risk of getting this disease, especially if they also complain about dactylitis and tendinitis. They should always be seen a, by a rheumatologist. And last but not least, uh, please be aware of uh, joint pains in, in patients beneath 40 years of age, because these have a really poor prognosis. If their joints deteriorate in the age of 20 they have a very they, they have to use these joints for the rest of their life so it's important that we use our um, ability to spot these patients at very early age uh, because they can benefit a lot from treatment early in early age and at an early stage of their disease 
So thank you for your attention. And I should stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I forgot to say in the beginning, please use the Q&A if you have any questions. But are there any burning questions for from our other presenters? I, some, I have just a question for you. I quite often um, experience that uh, uh, when I have a patient, and it's also, as you said, many young patients with uh, back pain, uh, and I refer them to the rheumatologist, they can't find every evidence for sure that they have psoriasis, arthritis, and then they just uh, uh, send them back. So... How could we do to to identify the patient a little bit earlier? Because then if the patient have more severe psoriasis and I start treatment, then the patient said, oh, it was so nice for my back. Pain. It helped my back, yeah. yeah. The problem is that, that uh, we have a disadvantage compared to the uh, dermatologist. We can't see. Uh, we can only uh, rely on our clinical experience and our imaging. And uh, sometimes if you are in doubt, I favor that we do use a, a, a treatment uh, to see and, and then inform the patients that if we don't see any benefit within the next three or four months, it's probably uh, worth the try, but we can always stop the treatment. But we could probably discuss these difficult patients in the end of the um, uh, uh, yeah. presentation because we all see these patients. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then, oh, there's one I can say. What is the most cost-efficient markers to measure disease progression in psoriasis arthritis? It, it's probably a clinical examination. We usually use the the uh, joint count, where we uh, count all the joints, how many uh, tender and swollen joints they have, and then an X-ray, uh, depending on how uh, severe their disease, but at least uh, once every second year to see if they have disease progression. The problem is that, that this doesn't measure pain that well. And many of these patients, even though we treat them quite intensely for their psoriasis, for example, with anti-TNF or anti-IL-17 or what we use, they can continue to report pain over a, a long period. And that is because their system has been educated to feel pain all the time. And they can be really, really tricky. Thank you.